Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is an English lesson for the third grade high school students, and today we are going to talk about the past. In today's lesson, you are going to read a text about a historical figure, as well as write one about someone historically important from your area. And you are going to do all of this using past tenses. In this lesson, you are going to need your notebook, something to write with, and a smartphone or a laptop with internet connection. As for QR code reader, I'm sure you already have it. We are going to need it today. When watching this video, please feel free to stop whenever you feel necessary so you can copy the link or write something down. Our first activity is a warm-up activity. We are going to play Kahoot with past tenses. To join in, just write your name after you copy the link or scan the code. Tell me, which tenses were used in the quiz? How can we express the past? I'm sure you have recognized past tenses like past simple, past continuous, past perfect, and past perfect continuous. As well as used to and would. Our next activity is still connected with the past tenses. This is a quiz which will help you revise different uses of the past tenses and expressions. Copy the link or scan the code with your mobile phone and play the matching game. If you don't get the right answer from the first try, don't worry. You can repeat again and I'm sure you will do much better. So, let's explain the uses. This here is past simple. Yesterday he cleared up the room, painted the walls light blue and put everything back in its place. In this case, we are talking about a series of finished activities. He cleared up, painted, and put everything back. As for past continuous, it is used in two sentences. The first one, while I was cleaning, my sister was making dinner, is an example of two actions happening simultaneously. And the second one, while everybody was panicking, they got back into the apartment, it shows us the use of past continuous as the background to another activity. This example shows the use of past perfect. Past perfect is used to talk about an action that happened before another past action. In this case, first the lesson started, then I joined in. She had been training for the triathlon is an example of past perfect continuous. As soon as we have continuous form, we know that we are talking about something that lasted longer. Past perfect continuous is used when we talk about actions which lasted for some time before another past activity. In this case, she looked amazing in the past because she had been training. She had been training before looking great, amazing, and she had been doing it for some time. We are left with the use of would and used to. Both of these expressions are used to talk about past habits. While used to can be used with both state and active verbs, would can only be used with active verbs. So, you can say instead of, I would sit in my granny's lap, I used to sit in my granny's lap. But you can't say, Johnny would like tomatoes, instead, Johnny used to like tomatoes, because the meaning changes. Enough about the rules. Let's move to practical use of past tenses. I want you to think. When could you use past tenses when presenting a tourist destination? What would you talk about? 
you would probably use it when talking about the history of your town or some important people from your town's past. Today, we will concentrate on historical figures. We have prepared another quiz for you. Let's see if you can match some very important people with the towns we associate them with. Again, scan the code or copy the link and play the game. This was probably too easy for you. I would like you to concentrate on the first person in the exercise, Van Josipiewicz. What do you know about him? I'm sure you all know that he was born in Petrovaradin, but what about his connection with Zaprešić? You will find out more about him from this text. This is a gap fill exercise. In order to get the whole text, you will have to drag the verbs into their gaps. Once again, copy the link or scan the code and you're all set to go. I have some questions about Josip Bielacic for you. Who was he? What are the things we remember him by? What about his personal life? And how is he connected with Novi Dvori in Zaprišić? You have here a link and a QR code for the text about Josip Bielacic to help you remember the answers. Are your answers similar to these? Josip Jelacic was a general, a count, and a Croatian ban who abolished serfdom and tax pay. He also fought for a right to use Croatian as the official language. While his professional life flourished, he didn't have much time for his private life. He got married quite old, had one daughter who died very young. Ban Josip Jelacic lived in Novi Dvori together with his family. This is also the place where his family tomb is. Let's go back to the text about Ban Josip Jelacic and discuss its structure. It consists of three parts. Introduction, a part where we introduce the topic. In this case, we have connected Ban Josip Jelacic with Novi Dvori. The body, in our case, it consists of two paragraphs, one about Ban's accomplishments, another about his personal life. And finally, conclusion, the part where we wrap up the story about Ban and Novi Dvori. Your task is to write a similar text about a historical figure from your region or town. It should be between 100 and 150 words long. It should have the introduction, body and conclusion. Also, you should use three different ways of expressing the past. Don't forget about cohesive devices like linking words. They will make your text easier to follow. Creating a mind map is your starting point. It can help you organize your ideas before you start writing the text. Choose a historical figure and think about his or her background, work, national or international importance, personal life, and not to forget his or her connection with the town or region you come from. You can check your writing with your virtual classroom teacher. Good luck. We've come to the end. The only thing that is left for you to do is to go through this checklist and assess your writing. Have you chosen a historical figure from your area? What about a mind map? Also, have you organized your text into three parts? Have you used three different ways to write about the past? And is your text between 100 and 150 words long? Finally, 
Have you used linking words? I hope you have done all these things. This is all for today. Goodbye till next time.